Hi, this is Lesson 2.4, Related Rate Story Problems. And these are the notes developed by Taylor and Shaw. So with this, we take the implicit differentiation that we did in the last section, and now we, re we apply it to story problems. And what we want to do with this is differentiate with respect to time. So we're going to have d dt dt being the, with respect to time, portion of what we're doing. So the procedure for related rate problems. First of all, draw a picture. You need to have a picture. I like to give you a picture, but I don't always do that. But then you have to find variables for all of the unknowns. Also, write out what is given and what you need to find. Then three is write an equation relating the variables. And I can give you some hints on this, but sometimes you gotta come up with stuff. Other times they will give you already a related equation for this. These are key though. If a quantity is changing, it must be represented with a variable. If you have something that is not changing, it's a constant, it must be represented with a number value. Well, must it might be a little strong here because when you do the derivative, the rate of change will be zero. That thing is not changing, so you could keep it as a variable. It's a lot easier, though, if you do put it as a constant. We'll show you. Look for secondary relationships to reduce the number of variables. That's always, that always makes it a lot easier. You can avoid product and quotient rules, which saves you some bad stuff going on. Then four, implicit differentiate both sides with respect to t, and then five, substitute number and values and solve. So here's the first one. Here's the equation that we do have, xy is equal to 12. So I can differentiate that one, so I'm going to take the first times the derivative of the second. Now this is with respect to t now, with not with respect to x. And I do have to take the derivative of x with respect to t, so I'm going to go the second times the derivative of the first. The derivative of x now is going to be dx dt because it's with respect to time. I do have to do that. And then this would be equal to 0. Now I can plug in the values right now. And so now I have x. Oh, I don't know what x is. Well, how can I find x? Well, I do know that y is 4. So when y is 4, x is 3. So I have 3. dy dt is what I want to find. And then y I do have, and dx dt I do have. Now, this means that x is decreasing since it's negative rate. And then this is equal to 0. So if I solve for dy dt, that's going to be equal to 8. Bring the 24 over, divide by 3. In this problem and other problems, you'll be chaining off everything with respect to t. So even my x stuff will, be ha will have to be chained off. What happens now is that with related rates, we do end up with trying to relate things together in geometric figures. A lot of times it is geometric figures, might be other areas too. One area that you do see those right triangles. And so if we want to relate the sides of a right triangle, what are you going to do? Well, I think you all know x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared if those are the sides of a right triangle. This would be my related equation. A lot of times that happens for right triangles. Another related equation might be for theta. If I want to find out how theta is changing, I need a related equation for theta. So you might use that the cosine of theta, this is a related equation, would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be the x over the z. You similarly could use sine or tangent to relate the things together. It depends which, which one makes the problem a little bit easier. So these are very common related equations that you would see with right triangles. You also might see different shapes like cylinders and cones. If I have a cone, the formula for the volume of the cone 
would be 1 third pi r squared h. That's my three dimensions for my volume. That's a related equation you can deal with. What happens with this now is that a lot of times you can find r in terms of h or h in terms of r depending upon how the problem set up. And if you notice that, my picture isn't great here, but you can set up similar triangles to find out ratios, and we'll probably show you some of those examples in class as we go. But these are related equations that you can set up. Once you set them up, then you can go ahead and solve the problem. So let's look at number two. Oh, this looks like one of those right triangles. If you read this, a windlass is used to tow a boat to a dock. The rope is attached to the boat at a point 15 feet below the level of the windlass. If the windlass pulls in rope at a rate of 30 feet per minute, at what rate is the boat approaching the dock when, it is 25, when there is 25 feet of rope out? Now notice this is a quantity. A lot of people want to plug this quantity in right away, but the length of the rope is changing, so you keep it as a variable as we said at the beginning. This quantity here, though, is always the same. So then I can plug this one in, but I cannot plug this one in until I've differentiated. So to understand this problem, this quantity is shrinking and this quantity is shrinking as we tow the rope in. Now, the first thing that we want to do is find out what we know. So we know a few things here. We do know that the windlass pulls in the rope at a rate of 30 feet per minute. So here's my rope, the z quantity, it's a rate, so that's my dz dt. My dz dt is going to be 30. Now you have to be careful, I've already said that the rope is shrinking, so is this a positive 30 or a negative 30? You're going to have to determine a lot of times if this is a positive or negative quantity. It's going to be negative because the rope is shrinking, decreasing. We can call y equal to 15, that does help me. And then what do we want to find? We want to find dx dt when z is equal to 25. So I've cleaned some of this up. Now we want to go ahead and write our related equation. Our related re equation usually for a right triangle is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in this case, it's going to be x squared plus y squared. Now, this quantity is always going to be the same. So I'm just going to call that 15. So it's 15 squared is equal to my z squared. x and z are both changing, so I need to keep those as variables. I don't want to plug this 25 in yet. So then the next thing you do is go ahead and differentiate. So if I take this and differentiate, this would be 2x dx dt, so you chain this off with respect to t, is equal to, remember the derivative of a constant is 0, then I get 2z dz dt. That's our related uh, equation differentiated. Now I can go plug in the things that I know to sort this out. The only th other thing that I don't have though is I don't have my x value. But if I have my y and I have my z, I can go ahead and figure out what my x value is going to be. So sometimes you got to hunt and peck and find these values. So x would be 20 under those conditions. So I'm going to plug that in now. So this would be 20 and dx dt is what we want to find. And then plug in your z. Our z is third, uh, I'm sorry, 25, and dz dt is negative 30. If you go ahead and solve that, so I solve that for dx dt, I get negative 37.5. What are the units that I put on this? Well, the differentials written like this are very nice because how is x or what value, what units do I place on x? Well, that would be my feet. And then what do I place on dt here? That would be my time factor, and in this case it would be minutes. So I get 
negative 37.5 feet per minute is how the how fast the boat is being pulled into the dock. Now number three, a policeman is traveling south toward an intersection and spots a speedy car traveling east away from the intersection. The policeman is 0.6 miles from the intersection and the car is 0.8 miles from the intersection. The policeman's radar shows the distance between them is increasing at a rate of 20 miles per hour. If the speed of the police car is 60 miles per hour, what is the speed of the car? Well, we need a diagram definitely for this. So if the policeman is traveling south, we can represent that as just a line segment going this way. And then the car is at the intersection goes beyond it traveling east, so we can represent it with the segment that way. And the distance between the two is this segment right here. So I do have a right triangle. We can call this X, we can call this Y, and we can call this Z. That's my right triangle representation again. So let's write out all the things that we know. We know that the policeman is 0.6 miles from the intersection when the car is 0.8 miles away from the intersection. Now these values don't help me right now because I need to only plug those in after I differentiate because they are changing quantities. But I do know that the distance between the two are increasing at a rate of 20 miles per hour. That's my z. So I know that dz dt is equal to a positive 20 miles per hour. We also know the policeman is traveling at 60 miles per hour. Now, when we look at this Y, is this Y value going to be increasing or decreasing? I would say that it's going to be decreasing, so that distance Y is decreasing by 60 miles per hour. And then what do we want to go ahead and find? We want to find out how fast the car is going. So we want to find the X dt when y is 0.6, x is 0.8, and then we should be able to find out what z is. Nice little Pythagorean triple there. 3, 4, 5, everything doubled, so then z would be 10, so 1.0. So I just found that by plugging that into Pythagorean theorem. My related equation then is going to be this x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. Notice that all of these quantities are changing. Previous example, one of them was fixed. So since all of them are changing, I differentiate, and they pretty much all turn out to be the same. 2y dy dt is equal to 2z dz dt. I can divide everything by 2 and then plug in what I do know. x is 0.8. dx dt, that's the thing I want to find, so I put in dx dt. Plus, I plug in the y and so on. You can do this. Simplifying this, I get 0.8 dx dt. Checking on our algebra here, this would be this would be negative 36, bring it over, and I get 56. So then dx dt is going to be 58 divided by point, I'm sorry, 56 divided by 0.8, which just gives me 70 miles per hour. Once again, dx is miles and dt are hours. That all matches up very nice. Moving on to number four, we have gravel. Gravel is falling on a conical pile at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. At all times, the radius of the cone is twice the height of the cone. This is really nice information for us because this helps us eliminate some of the variables. So we want to find the rate of the height of the pile when the radius of the pile is six feet. Here is the equation for the cone. If they give you some geometrical figure that's a little bit uh, odd, they will give you the formula for the volume. 
Sometimes you might have to find it, but a lot of times, uh, like I said, if it's an odd one, they'll give it to you. So what do we know? Well, first of all, we do know this right here. When I see feet cubed, that tells me volume. PVDT. That's the change in volume. That's what I have right up here. PVDT is equal to 10 cubic feet per minute. Now, once again, is this increasing or is this decreasing? Well, the gravel is falling, so the pile is getting bigger. So this is going to be a positive quantity. You have to always figure out is it positive or negative. Now we also know that the radius is equal to twice the height of the cone at all times. Now how does that help us? Well that helps to simplify our equation right here. So then the last thing is what do we want to go ahead and find? We want to find how the height is changing, the HDT, when R is equal to 6. So this one will look a little crazy to you, but once you get into these problems, they aren't too bad. So I'm going to start off with my volume formula. This is one-third pi r squared h. This information is huge for me because I want to find the h dt. I can get rid of this r then. So I'm going to substitute and take out that r and put in something in terms of h. In this case, it's going to be... 2h from right here. Now I have everything in terms of h. I have one variable. Wow, that makes things a lot easier. Otherwise, I would have to do a product rule here, which I don't want to do if I can avoid. So I simplify the equation, and the 2 squared becomes a 4, and so I get this right here. Now put the h's together. That's the whole idea. Sometimes I see students still using the product rule with h squared and h. No, just make it h cubed. So now I go ahead and find dv dt, which is equal to the 4 thirds pi, is just a constant that goes along for the ride, and then I get th times 3 h squared. Don't forget to chain the h dt. And if you notice my equation here, my equation has h, but all I said was r is equal to 6, so I have to go ahead and find out what h is. Then I can plug in everything that I know. So dv dt is 10. I have 4 thirds times pi. I guess the 3 is cancel here, so I don't need that. And then my h is 3 squared, and then my dh dt. That's the thing I want to find. So if I just do some simple division here, dh dt then is going to be 10 over 36 pi feet per minute. And yes, the height is just a regular quantity with a single unit of feet. Now I can simplify that to 5 over 18 pi as well. So that's how you take a related equation that they've given you, find the things that you do know, and then go ahead and find the things that you do want to find. It's a little bit involved, but once you get good at these things, you'll start rolling and it will be all right for you. All right, I hope this helps you. We'll get into some more advanced examples in class, and I hope you enjoy this topic, because I sure do. Have a great day.